When people hear the word conservation, many things come to mind like protecting rivers, land, and mountains. Yet, there is another side of conservation that often goes unnoticed, encompassing us hidden by day and shrouded by the light of innovation by night. Today, we're going to talk about the night sky, light pollution, and ways to help mitigate light pollution. Light pollution is associated with the hazing and brightening of the night sky from artificial lighting, reducing the amount of stars visible to us from the surface of the earth while also interrupting natural migration patterns and everyday life for animals. With this, light pollution can be split into two different kinds of light pollution, astronomical and ecological light pollution. Astronomical light pollution is generally what comes to mind when light pollution is mentioned. This includes the hazing and brightening of the night sky from artificial light, or even celestial bodies brightening the night sky, such as the moon. Ecological light pollution, while it does bleed into astronomical light pollution, refers to the effects artificial light has on nearby ecosystems and organisms. This includes direct glare, chronically increased illumination, and temporary unexpected fluctuations in lighting. Normally, when I would start this discussion in person, I would ask everyone in the room if you have seen the Milky Way in real life. Most likely, 95% of the classroom would say no. This makes sense, however. Light pollution has been a growing problem across the entire planet since the introduction of the incandescent light bulb. As time has passed, light pollution has gotten much worse due to increasing population, the expansion of cities, poor lighting regulations, and for Asheville in particular, tourism. With this, the stars have been slowly disappearing from our view over time as urbanization spreads throughout our mountains. But how exactly does an increase in urban light cause them to leave our view? There are two things going on here, one with the human eye and two with artificial lights. First, let's take a look at the eye. Walk into your bathroom and stand close to the mirror to where you can see your pupils well. This is the dark black circle at the center of your eye. While staring at your eyes, flip the light switch off for the bathroom. You'll notice that once the room gets darker, about a second later your pupils get larger. This is because your pupils are managing how much light comes in your eye. Your pupils do this for a variety of reasons. When it's dark outside, your pupils get very large in order to let in as much light as possible and pick up as much information as it can. This allows us to see things better at night when there is minimal light. When it's bright outside, your pupils get smaller to protect your eye from the harsh light. This is part of the reason why your eyes hurt so much when they get dilated at the eye doctor. Your pupils are wide open and are taking in too much light. So in short, the eye adjusts how much light it receives. Let's keep this in mind as we continue. The second thing going on is the artificial light humans produce. Generally, artificial light provides a huge benefit to us, lighting our streets, houses, and cities. However, the photons that are emitted from these lights don't only illuminate what we want to see, but everything else around it. Street lights and city lights often shoot light off of cement and reflect it back up towards the sky. Some even just spew light all around. These photons make it up into the lower atmosphere, reflecting off of atmospheric particles and water molecules. Multiply this by hundreds of thousands of lights, and you very quickly create a haze of light encompassing the city. Now, combine this with the eye. For the viewer inside of the haze of light, the eye reads that there is a ton of light in the area, therefore closing the pupil to protect itself. This, however, prevents us from taking in enough light to see faint stars, which are nowhere near as bright due to their size and how far away they are. This also seriously affects wildlife too. Birds flying at night that suddenly enter bright lights such as street lamps may go blind and lose their sense of flight and direction. Frogs and toads upon being exposed to bright lights at night can go blind for hours, leaving themselves exposed and confused. Outside of western North Carolina, sea turtles, when hatching at night, use the light of the moon reflecting on the ocean waves in order to guide themselves to the ocean. Numerous lights lining the coasts, such as large boardwalks or nearby hotels, can confuse the sea turtles and lead them away from the ocean. Now, you may not think light pollution is that bad in the mountains. Well, light pollution generated from urban areas can travel almost 100 miles from its source. That means even Craggy Pinnacle, which is considered a great place to go stargazing, experiences ample light pollution from downtown Asheville in the southwest. 
Much of the street lighting in Asheville is not optimal for wildlife either. So, how exactly do we reduce light pollution? First, contrary to popular belief, LED bulbs are not better than sodium-based bulbs when it comes to light pollution. They save energy, but actually throw a higher spectrum of blue light, which is more harmful to humans and animals alike, and brighten the sky even more so. One way we can reduce light pollution is by creating proper light fixtures. Constructing street lights and lamps that have a protective shield and direct light only downwards can reduce light pollution significantly on a large scale. Establishing a light ordinance from small neighborhood communities to entire cities can also reduce light pollution. And on a personal level, closing your blinds at night when you have lights on in the house and not installing outdoor lighting can help light pollution in your neighborhood. There are other ways to help light pollution from spreading as well. Specifically, the Southern Appalachian Highlands Conservancy aids in saving dark sky spaces by putting tracts of land under protection. The Southern Appalachian Highlands Conservancy's extensive conservation work permanently protects dark sky landscape, therefore preventing any development of artificial lighting and light pollution that could have occurred if these mountaintop acres were developed. For example, you can see on a large scale how SAHC's conservation work in the Spruce Pine area and the Highlands of Rhone help create a little pocket of sky that lets in the stars. Still curious about light pollution? Check out the articles below to learn more about light pollution. If you are curious about how much light pollution is in your area, or where to go for stargazing, you can use the light pollution map I used in this video to find your nearest dark sky location. Thanks for watching, and as always, stay curious.